Ladies and gentlemen, the moment has arrived, the moment that I've been waiting for since last May. Welcome back to the award-winning podcast, The Crossover with Joe R. Lucas. I can't express enough my gratitude towards everyone that's made the show such, such a success, and it's all thanks to the people, not only behind the scenes, but of course, my amazing guests. Today, I have to say that this is the perfect way to start. This interview will be different in so many ways from, from other players that I've spoken with. It's been an absolute pleasure to research this guy over the last few days and to learn so much about the person, not just the athlete that he is. And I'm talking today, it's my honor to invite to my show the one and only Nigel Hayes Davis. My man, welcome. <laughs> yeah, you, the applause you hear... back there is crazy thank you guys this is <laughs> you like that introduction man thank you so much for having me appreciate it happy to be here I, i've been working on that for the last couple hours so you know you i got all sho- i got showered up i shaved you know, i had my wife put some makeup on the whole thing nailed, you know? nailed it 10 out of 10 stuck the landing <laughs> hey man like we said just earlier man thanks for taking the time and uh, I, I i need to tell you that in some ways you're like one of the easiest guys to research, but in other ways, you're not. It's not so easy to like do an interview with you. You know that, right? Is that good or bad? That, I mean, that's gonna be up to you to determine by the time we're done. <laughs> is it, you're you're right. Trick question. There's no such thing as good or bad. It just is. Have no, you heard the story no. about the uh, the farmer, the ancient Chinese farmer? No, tell me. You hear that one? That's the story about. Are uh, you taking over my podcast already? No, 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 no. It's just <laughs> it's just uh, about. I read a good self-help book. It's called uh-huh. Abundance Now. And one right. of the points the, uh, the author was making was that he had a teacher that said, to reshape your life in perspective, if you just say the phrase, everything that happens to me is good, mm-hmm. and then live your life like that. So I've started doing that the last like two or three months. <laughs> Love the changes in life. But there's also the farmer story where like the farmer had like his son, his son was working the field and uh, his son got hurt and everybody in the town was like, oh, that's so bad. And he was like, I don't know if it's good or bad. And then the next day, like the military comes and was like, we need every abled male child to come. And they skipped over his son because he was injured. And they were like, oh, you're so lucky. It was good (laughs) or bad. And then he goes, I don't know if it's good or bad. So like, it's just a story going along the lines of like, you know, there's nothing good or bad I, I, i've always felt that way man bad experiences are their their experiences they're not good or bad they're just they're, they're, they're life lessons you know but i guess what i was getting at was i'm used to like interviewing guys that are just ball players you know that where you get you get to talk about basketball you get to talk about the way they grew up with with you i mean you're like this 20 year old basketball and I, but i feel like i'm talking to a coach i feel like i'm talking to an older soul from everything that I've researched, and it, and it's, it made me prepare a little bit more for everything. Uh, you feel that way? Do you feel like everything you've been through has, has, has made you a little bit, let's say, more mature, so to speak? Um, no, I wouldn't say. I, I haven't been through, I would say this, I haven't been through anything crazy in my life, anything in my childhood or my upbringing that's like made me have to grow up quicker or that's made me have to become a man faster or anything mm-hmm. like that. I just credit it to, um, I've been blessed with a fantastic, wonderful mother and um, the greatest man I've ever met and my stepfather and that combination of people. And then as I just walk through my, my life, I've been able to come in contact with a lot of, you know, thoughtful, smart, um, caring people who've, who've helped me. And I would say the credit to to what I am today is I just listen. So like, you know, when people say, uh, I'm, I'm this or I'm that, or I'm smart or I'm that, I just tell people, I'm, I'm just repeating things that I've learned from, from people that are older than me and people that have done this journey called life a little longer than I have. And, uh, you know, just to be able to learn from other people's mistakes or other people's advice. And I think I've tried to do a good job of learning from advice. It's a lot, it's a lot easier and a lot better to learn from advice and experience. Yeah, I, I hope you don't learn. I hope you don't listen to too many people, though, because you know sometimes you see those Twitter feeds and those Instagram feeds. And yes. After yeah, after yeah, a bad yeah. game, I, you know, there, there, there's a certain extent where you want to listen, and others where you just want to kind of eliminate. Also, right. But what come what comes with that is the ability to discern. And, right. and that's something I've gotten better at as I got older. Is you know discernment, knowing who to listen to, who not to listen to, what to 
what to listen to, what not to, even if it comes from, you know, family, you know, someone says something to you, you can go like, all right, I, I really shouldn't like listen to this right now. This is not what I, I need to do currently. Although like it's from someone close to you, just right. being able to have that uh, ability to, to sort between that. And maybe that's where, you know, my, my biggest gift, I guess, in my, my personality, what I am is finding that the happy medium of, what advice to take, what stuff I'm hearing to take, and what to, to let go and let pass. There, there is an, an old song that I used to know, and, and you know, it's an old, an old saying that goes back that if you want to talk to somebody, you have to speak to them in their own language. You know, that's the best way to get through to somebody. And, and, I, and not only do I mean like in French and Italian or Spanish or whatever, but I mean you got to know who you're sitting in front of and who you're talking to to be able to get, them, to, get to know them. But in this aspect with you, you I mean, you've come here – you, you you speak, but I, I, my question is: you 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 little Lithuanian, you've done some Spanish, you've done uh, what else? Uh, so here here is what it. So I got are you got fluent? Into it. I, but are you fluent in these? This is yeah, I'm gonna put it all out here. So I got into an <laughs> argument with Steph, our assistant, because he was wanted to say like he knows he was better in languages than me, and I said, listen, Steph. You're how old and you've been learning these languages as a European? Like I'm a I'm American, first of all. Yeah, to most Americans, you. there's thank only you. one language. It's English. Like wherever hey, I go, hey. speak English. Right? Hey, that, hey, that, you know, world. you know that's in my next that's in my next question right. setup, the way there is no so, other language. Exactly. As an American, to most Americans, is English. Like speak English. Why don't you right. know English? Like, but the languages I've learned, I've learned in like the last five years. Right. So like Lithuanian. Turkish, Spanish, uh, Croatian slash Serbian, like those languages are languages like I learned while playing in a country. I've never played in a Serbian or Croatian country, right, but that, that it's was, a very popular basketball language. Right. And on any given team in Europe or America, you will find a coach, a staff member, a player, exactly. someone that speaks, you know, that that sort of language. So those languages I've tried to learn myself so I can get by in Turkish and do whatever I need. If you come here, you would think I'm fluent. Uh, the same with really? Spanish. Yeah, yeah. If you were here, I could like go the whole day speaking only Turkish, but I'm not fluent. Like, I can't have a conversation like this in any of these languages. Right, right, right. Of course. Yeah. But like, I can get things done, which is really the, the basis of the language and like the countries I've played in that I've learned. Um, the fans and people appreciate that, you know, a lot, trying to be able to learn the the native language of the country you play in and try to like bridge that gap of, you know, culture and language and connecting with the people. So I've done my best to try to try to learn, but no, I'm only fluent in English. My Italian is like really, really good. If I played, if I played for, you know, Milan or Bologna, I'd be fluent in Italian in like a month. Dude, or two. dude my mom was Italian. I still like to this day, I, mean, I speak Spanish perfectly, but well, almost perfectly. Some people would say no, but you know, I feel like a failure every year because I say, man, this year I'm going to learn Italian from my mom. And I never do it. I never get around to it. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 good. Languages are great. I, my, I'm trying to get my mom to learn Spanish. She's been trying to learn uh, Spanish. So she's been using her Duolingo and uh, and she loves it. I tried to I try to push her. I told her the best thing she needs to do, though, is get a speaking partner. As right. really, which you have to be able to speak the language. And for me, it's been easier because when I learned Lithuanian, it was the hardest language ever, by the way. Yeah, 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 that's but, it. <laughs> um, like, I was in the country. So, like, I hear it every day. I see it every day. I'm around right. it every day. So, it makes it easier to to learn. But, um, but but you guys have a disadvantage now, though, because when I played, you know, I, I came over here in Europe in, like, the late 80s, early 90s. And there was no no coaches spoke English. There was no your, I mean, your league was your league, but it was all in your 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 native language, whether you're in Spain or Greece or Turkey or wherever. So you always had like one translator to translate everything over into English for you, and he didn't really know what he was doing, anyways. So you know, it's end of the fourth quarter with about a minute left in the game, and he's trying to translate to you, you know, and it's like. Man, there's no way. I just, I just got to, I just got to play by instinct. But I think it's, I think it says a lot about you as a person that, in an atmosphere where you don't need to learn a different language, there's no need for you to be successful to learn a different language to be as successful as you've been. I think it says a lot about you as a person that you, you're trying to learn these different languages and and and, and, and different cultures. Yeah, no, it's, it's definitely one of the, the goals, just to immerse yourself. Like I said, it makes the experience better. 
it makes it the, the fans love it. The everyday people you meet that aren't fans, you interact, it makes it better. It always brings a smile to someone's face when, you know, they look at me and go, oh, he's an American. And then, you know, I can have a conversation in your language right. and you see their whole body language shift. You can see a smile on their face. Now people are more welcoming, more receptive to you, more able to help. Of course. And then um, there's a Lithuanian phrase, actually, that I learned from uh, from Yankee was he was one of their sayings in Lithuanian was like, the more languages, you know, the more, you know, the more, you and, know, right. And so I got, I took that to, to heart as well. Just the, the more, you know, like languages have their own expressions and, and everything. And there's just so many things that you, you can learn by, by speaking another language and being able to connect with different people. And you never know when you need it. You know, that's what exactly. I tell you. You never know when you may, I may be somewhere in America, and someone's in an emergency and only speak Turkish. And then I show up like, ah, I've been waiting for this moment. So you never know. Man, man. in my back pocket. I think the best best piece of advice I had when I when I first came to Spain was the only two things you need to do is 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 be a good teammate and learn the language. And and the rest is like the rest pretty much goes by easy. Of course you gotta you gotta play also. That always comes to it, but Let's get into let let's get into what's most important here. You got your family, man. It's because it's what it's what you're all about. It's what you're made of. It's it's who you are today. Start with your your brothers and sisters. Uh, tell me a little bit. About, I know about your relationship with your stepdad. But is theirs the same as yours? Is it is it similar? I, I have an older brother, two younger sisters. We all have mm -hmm. the same father. And you know, parents got divorced. Mother remarried, and she remarried to Albert Davis. Hence the the Davis added. Right. And a lot of people are asking, you know, about the addition to it late. And it's from me growing up and then being in the relationships I was in and then seeing him as a man, what he did for a family and what he does for my mother. And then as I get older and then I start, you know, being in a relationship and like, I'm like, okay, like now I'm seeing what you were doing and understanding. So my appreciation for him grows every day. And, you know, that was a way to like, you know, um, to show him how much that I appreciate for what he did. You know, uh, you would be hard pressed to find a man, marry a woman who has four children. Man, it's very, man. it's a very short <laughs> list of men that, that sign up to, to do that. So for him to do that and the sacrifices he made. And one of my favorite stories to tell about him is in college, um, my mother wanted to watch one of the games and he works at, he worked at Chrysler and he finished like an eight hour, nine hour shift, got off work. He, he ran, he ran morning. a night shift too, right? It drove yeah. all the way to Wisconsin, which is like six, six and a half hours, watched the game, drove all the way back and then went into work as soon as he got back. So hey. he did all of that because my mom wanted to watch her son play. So and he, he was a line worker in, in Chrysler. Yes. Well, yeah. So that, yeah. I mean, that's, so, I mean, that's, that's, he, that's it's work, not work. easy work. Yeah. It's not easy work. I'm <laughs> exactly. telling you, it's not easy work. That's, so that's not, that's not, not you, sitting at a desk. Yeah. It's, it's you you can't go sit work. in your chair, close a window for a minute, take a nap for 20 yes. minutes. You're on the line. He's, he, he's, he's working his ass off. So for that story right there is, you know, like the epitome of what he will do for my mother and then what he would do for, you know, my, myself and my siblings. So like I said, greatest man I've ever met aspiration to be as great as he is. So that's what I try to strive, strive to be. And then, um, like I said, I have my, my older brother used to, uh, play football growing up college football player at Ohio state and transferred a couple of times. Um, my two younger sisters, they moved and they work, um, their jobs. And, um, you know, we're, we have a family group chat. Um, mm. it's called Wakanda, like from, uh, the uh, Marvel movie Wakanda. So, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, in our family group chats, hilarious. Everyone's funny. Um, <laughs> family's hilarious, actually. Like, one of the best parts about I love about my family is that we love quoting movies. And there's a lot of movie oh, lines movies that we watched, and like <laughs> a situation will happen, and we'll just quote a movie line from something, and like it always fits and is uh, applicable to the situation. But um, no, everything's uh, everything's good. It's all about the the family, it's all about, you know, taking care of, of stuff. And, and then my mother has been extremely instrumental in, you know, the, the person I am today of the values and, and characters that she wanted me to, to be and wanted all of us to be. 
And uh, I just try my best every day, you know, to uh, if I can if I can make a decision in life and I go, you know what, now it's a good job. I'm proud of you. And then if I know my mother and family would be proud of me, then, you know, I know I'm doing something right. You, 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 it's funny because all this stuff that I've researched you on, all the interviews and, and that I've looked up, it's like you, you talk about your stepdad so often that you almost put your mom in the back in the back seat sometimes, you know? And I'm like, <laughs> this is what I would say right here. So this this is the relationship though, and I'm glad you said it. So like, I want this one to be the clip everyone uses. So like, I, really, I talk about I talk about my stepfather. This. I talk about my stepfather all the time. You're right, and everyone's like, oh, what about your mom? But everyone knows that I love my mother dearly, right? Of love course. my mother. I love my mother so much that like, in order to save my like, let's say we're walking down the street and I had to push my stepfather in front of a truck to save my mother, I wouldn't even think about pushing him. But the reason why he's so amazing is he would go before I could push him because he wouldn't want me to feel bad about it. Uh, and he would care that I much like about that. my mother and myself. So like, that's the relationship. Like I'd push him in front of a truck for my mom, but he would jump before I could push him. Man, not, man, not to listen, it's so funny, man, because that was a question I was going to put into this interview, and I'm like, nah, I mean, that might be a little bit too much, but you just did it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. So that, hopefully that sums up the relationship. There you go. That, that we, that, that I, I speak about when I speak about my parents. Because he stepped into your life at about six, right? There was a, your, your, your mom and dad, your, your biological dad was divorced from your mom, so you don't have much of a relationship there at all, do you? Zero relationship. I haven't spoken to him in, I, I don't know. But, even, you know, like I, like I tell, when tell people, so people ask me that question and they go, oh, how does it feel? It's like, it's great. Everything's perfect. Like literally right. the, the, the man my mother married, Albert Davis, has taken on the role as a father and I have not had a, a void or a slip or a gap right. in any way, shape or form as a male role model, as a father figure, as you know, even him in the early stages of helping me become a basketball player, you know, so like him making me dribble around the driveway, the chairs in the driveway, we had these lawn chairs and he would make me dribble around the driveway with my left hand. So that way I could have, I'd be able to use both my hands. So, you know, again, everything. Again, that's, that's probably right before he had to go take a nine hour shift at the Chrysler exactly. plant. Exactly. <laughs> Greatest man I've ever met, I tell you. Hey man, I've, I've heard I've heard you say in a bunch of interviews that you have no idea where you would be without him, or or obviously without your mom. But but my question is the opposite. I should say I've heard you say that I wouldn't be here today with you, or speaking with you if it wasn't for them. My question to you is, where would you be without them? Where would I be? I have no idea. I mean, I was. I don't know. My mother, well, let's see, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I mean, it's hard. It's like, you know, the whole nature versus nurture thing. I had extremely fantastic nurturing from my parents. And, you know, they made sure I grew up in a nice environment. I, fortunately, I didn't have to grow up in in rough times. I had everything I needed. I had things I wanted. I remember, again, another story. I remember I was playing for the YMCA, and there was these pair of Jordans that came out, and my stepdad knew I wanted them. I had to have them. And they were like a hundred and like sixty dollars. Mom was having a fit about it. Right before my game, he shows up with the shoes. Ha! Ah, gosh. Loved it, man. So hey, I don't know. Hey, you went out and played with those shoes those shoes on? I went out and played with those shoes on. They were so nice. I didn't even want to get them dirty too. They were I, white shoes. Imagine that. Imagine trying to play a game without trying to get your shoes dirty. Oh, That's man. what I, I'm, looking, I'm, I'm thinking about you posting up someone down logo, man. Don't step on my new kicks now. Yeah, like don't like move. <laughs> it's just everyone move softly and quietly when you walk around. But um, no, I would. I mean, the life, the life I've been able to have and continue to have and lead. I, I would rather not even think about the what if if I didn't have them. Talk to me about Wisconsin, man, because I, I heard through the interview and some other research that it was it was your mom's decision to send you to to Wisconsin, even though that's far away and, and, and Ohio State was right down the road and you're, you know, you, you were brought up in, in the Buckeyes. Here in Spain, we call it Toledo, but you know, you were brought up in Toledo. Yes, yeah, yes. <laughs> um, so about that decision, uh, so my last, my final three colleges were Wisconsin, um, Ohio State and Stanford. I actually want to go to, I, I want to go to Stanford the most. I know, but that was my thing. I was like, I can't believe you said no to Stanford. I, <laughs> If Stanford was maybe one time zone over, 
Oh, I, yeah, I know. I know it's it far away. It was just so far. Sanford was excellent. Campus was great. Uh, uh, the, the, the visit was great. You know, the, everything was fantastic. It was, I mean, it's Stanford. You know, hey, it's Stanford. Right. You yeah. know, that's all, that's all you need to say. But it's it was basketball, so, it's education, it's exactly. atmosphere, it's everything. I mean, I mean it's just Stanford every, is everything. Everything is perfect. Stanford is Stanford. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it was just it was too far. Yeah. Um, so... Elbert El- 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 ain't jumping in no car after his Chrysler ship to get in the oh, stand for to watch you play. Hey, he hates planes. He would drive to stay. He would drive to stay. Still- <laughs> Do you think I'm get- He drove to, we played the final four in college in Dallas and he drove. No way. From Toledo to Dallas. Yes. He hates flying, but I digress. <laughs> My last two schools were Wisconsin, Ohio State. I will always want to go to Ohio State, but um, my, my parents just didn't like the way the recruitment process went. It was like, uh, it was kind of like, you know, imagine trying to ask a girl to, to the, to the prom that you really want. She says no. And then you go back to your like option B uh, and me being the option B for them. You know, my mother wasn't, she's no. My, so, son, my, my son ain't option B to nobody. Right. Exactly. So <laughs> I wanted to go there and, um, we went to Wisconsin. She loved it. Uh, Lamont Paris, was uh, the man who recruited me. Fantastic job of recruiting. Great guy. Um, the visit was great. Staff, everybody was good. Everything was good. But I didn't want to go there. I wanted to go to Ohio State. He was still there. <laughs> and my mom just, she like, did not want me to go there. And like, I just knew it. And my staff, we knew. I was like, she does not want me to go there. So like, she didn't even know. I, I, I did not want to go to Wisconsin. I would just say that right now. But I just <laughs> did it because my mom wanted me to. So called Bo Ryan, told him I'm going. I went there. Because she said it, oh, boy, was she right, huh? <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I know the people of Wisconsin were happy with your mom. That's for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yes, she's the reason I went there. She she was the one who wanted me to go there, so I just listened to her. And great four years it was. I'm not I'm not gonna bring up the national championship game where you lost to Duke because I know that's, that's kind of like a little. We didn't <laughs> we didn't lose to Duke. We lost to Coach K. We lost to Coach K. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Just watch the game. There was a timeout in the second half. Coach K calls a timeout, gives a look at three members wearing striped shirts. <laughs> and, and then after that, everything changed. It gets real tricky. <laughs> you, I mean, I'm, I'm over here in Europe, so I could go that way if I need to, but we're going to stay out of that because I, I'd rather talk. I'd rather talk about, and there's might be people that are listening that aren't up to date on college athletics in the state. So I'm going to kind of fill them in a little bit. And the NCAA is, you know, I mean, there's a lot of different words I could use, but let's just say it's an organization that controlled everything because I want to, you know, be politically correct. And eventually over the years, it, it pretty much lived off of the names and the fame and the fame of their star athletes that they recruited and, you know, the student athletes, supposedly the student athletes that came in that were actually human beings were not treated as that. They were, you know, if, if they got any type of perk, any type of meal, any type of whatever, they could become ineligible to play for an entire season. If you transferred from one school to another, you'd have to sit out two years. When I played, it was two years if you transferred, if, if you transferred within conference, and then if you transfer it outside of conference, it was a year. And then, you know, of course, you still you still see, well, you used to see the college athletes sit at a, at a coffee shop or a bookstore or whatever, signing autographs for their shirts and not getting paid a dime because you can't even give them a cup of coffee because they were so strict. But but you fought that. you And, and I think that's probably one of your most impressive stats in in your career i mean i i don't know how much you had to do with this nil now this name images image and liking likeness but but i mean you fought it you were verbal about it and 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 that can't have that couldn't have been easy because uh you you deal with a a huge again i'm 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 trying to stay away from saying what i really want to say but you deal with a huge organization that is very very controlling yeah yeah no um no for sure so that that was an accident as well so my freshman year going into my sophomore year uh, had a teammate senior zach bohannon he -hmm. told me like hey uh there's this guy they have a a court case it's about getting players played i think you'd be great for it and i was young and i was like oh my god the senior thinks i'm gonna be great for something i'll freaking do it so (laughs) like i just did it 
I had no idea what it was, what I was getting into. Like, cause I was, it was, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And I wasn't right. aware that like players should be getting paid and we should be doing all this. And then as I started to learn about it, I was telling my mom, I said, man, my freshman year, I wore number 10. There was not a number 10 Jersey in the bookstore. My sophomore year, there's a lot of number 10 jerseys in there. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah, who's so getting that who's getting that money? Exactly. So that so that started and I said, ah, aha, I see. So we just started meeting with the lawyers and the court cases, and I could never talk about it for the longest time because it was always ongoing. And then like the uh the pinnacle moment was the college game day sign that I held with my my broke badger. And then I put my Venmo account and it started because the week before the same way we're just regular college students, there was a college student that was like, Hey mom or dad, I'm broke. Send beer money. And he put his Venmo (laughs) got thousands of dollars. No way. Thousands of dollars circulates Twitter. Everyone was like, Oh, what a feel good story. Random college kid gets all this money. I go hold up the sign. I'm the most ungrateful uh, Uh. player of all time. Shame on me for not just taking my education and, and wanting right. money. Like, and, and, pl- and, and plus, and plus, you'd be declared ineligible if anybody sent you money. Exactly. So the That's... way I did it, though, I did my research. I talked. I talked to the people without telling them what I needed to do. So I figured out, hey, the Venmo was never in my name. I never got any money. It was in my friend's uh, name, Tori. So Tori, all the money went to Tori's account, and so I never. Never got a dime, never touched a dime. So all I did was hold a sign. It's not illegal to hold a sign. Um, So they did all that. And then the part that people don't realize, and this stems from my mother and her upbringing, was all the money that was um, put into that Venmo account, I worked with uh, a member from the Boys and Girls Club, and there was like five or six families that I took like Christmas and Thanksgiving Day shopping to get toys and groceries. So all that money was given to these families so that they could have all that. But that's the part that they don't tell you. Of course they just not. Show you holding the sign. They don't show that all that money went. And, you know, they don't show the moments of, you know, the real reason why I did it. And I knew I was going to do this the whole time is, hey, you know, there's mom in there with her kids who is like crying, hugging me behind in the back of, you know, Target right. saying, thank you for allowing me to have Christmas for my kids while her kids are running around and they can pick any toys that they want. You know, they just want to show ungrateful college athlete, you know. So, yeah, but, but I mean, you, but you know, later on, you wanted to show that even more because in September 2023, you opened up a foundation for your mom, right? A panther, the, the Talia on Davis. Her, on her birthday, yes. It was on it's her a, birthday? The Panther Fund, yes. And what, what does that do? Explain, it, explain uh, it, it, what it's for because it's, it's essentially for kids, right? They go to school, get education. Yeah. So the high school I went to, um, my alma mater, my high school alma mater, uh, it's a fund that was opened up, you know, just look at as a bank account. I opened an account under the school, named it the Talaya Davis Panther Fund, and the money I put in there, and anyone else who wants to donate or contribute, this money is used for students who have to pay for school fees, who can't pay for school supplies. Um, Let's say we have career tech classes, so if someone wants to be, you know, an engineer or in culinary, or if they want to be in marketing and there's a field trip, and if they can't afford the field trip, the money can be used to provide the money to go on these field trips. So to make sure that at the most crucial point in time when you know students are in high school trying to figure out which direction they want to go, that they don't miss out on an opportunity to to do something or to have something that will put them in a better position. Dude, man, that, that's that's just so impressive, man. It, it, it to me, it's like <clears throat> you know. A lot of athletes, and and you know, I grew up an athlete my whole life, and there's a, there's a selfish side to us. You know what I mean? It's like you know, you you, you want to be the best you can be. You only concentrate on yourself. You usually don't think about anybody else outside your box. You know what I mean? But but it seems like for you, it's it, it it's different. It, it's it things matter to you, and I, and I, I'm I'm assuming that must come from your stepdad, from your mom, and and and, and everything you've grown up in, but. It's impressive to see people that, you know, because what I, I mean, I even saw your basketball camp. You know, you, you gave out the shout out to all the sponsors, you know, and, you know, it seemed like, you know, you had to go to all these these people and like ask them for donations, ask them for money. You know, so that, I mean, that's just that's that, I mean, it's just good stuff. You know what I mean? So that all these kids can go to a camp for free. 
Yeah, so that's what, uh, so the camp, I wanted it to, I saw actually one of my high school teammates and still friends, Chris Wormley, NFL player, he had a camp like a week or two before, and he gave a free camp to uh, to the kids. And my mom's been telling me I have to do a camp and give back to the kids. Always listen to my mother. So, sure, mom, let's do the camp. Hey, you went to uh, Wisconsin. Or, exactly. Of course, <laughs> there's got to be a free camp, you know, got to be a free camp. So I worked with um, Ashley, who's within my agency. I asked her, what do other guys do? Because, you know, she represents some NBA guys. What do they do for camps? So I can kind of figure out what I need to do. And then um, I worked with my high school coach, Bruce Smith. Love him. Um, and then, like, I worked with a lot of different people. Um, also, there's a gentleman, Montrese Terry from Toledo, who's really like integral in the community in terms of setting up all of these like charitable donations and making sure that the community is a community. So yeah. I worked with him. I reached out to the local businesses. Hey, I'm running a camp. If you'd like, you know, your name, I'll go. I'll have signs showing your business supported. I'll put it on my Instagram. I'll have it on the back of the T-shirts. So businesses donated, I put in the money and got everything. And then the community, as they found out, everyone starts, you know, coming around to help. And my mom was, uh, my mom was worried for a little bit. Cause she was like, how is all this going to come together? You didn't ask this many people to help you. And I'm like, I don't know, mom, like when you do something good, it always works out. So I show up the day before my camp, I have like all these signs to put up. I have to pump up like 300 damn basketballs and lay out t-shirts and all that and then like now you gotta I work there, on top of it yeah as i get there there are people from my high school that was there when i was in high school they're like oh hey nige i saw you doing the camp like can i help and i'm like yeah sure so everyone yeah. just walking around just starts helping and the next thing you know there's like 15 people helping me set up tables pump up the balls and everything That's is going crazy. great and i looked at my mom like hey mom Told you when your heart's in the right place and you do something good, it always works out. It's always it's always gonna work out. People Free love to help. The kids kids love, love, it. love the help love too. It. People yep. love to help out, you know. They, they, they love it. And then free camp for the kids is that's amazing. Hey, let me ask you a quick question. I'm gonna give you a little trivia shot real before we do our Euro League trivia at the end. You ever heard of Zweigels? Zweigels? Yeah. I have not. You have not heard of Zweigels? Zweigels. Man, yeah, I'm disappointed in you, my man. I got to ah, tell no, you. I hate to let people down, too. I'm a, now I'm going to be up all night thinking about why I did not know Zweigels. Well, you should, because explain to me this little invention that you have, the Hirana. Oh, gosh. Um, so the Hirana, oh, I have a meeting tomorrow, too, actually, a Zoom meeting with uh, a marketing lady who's going to help me. It's going to be great. But uh, no, it's then, a hot dog. Then, it's a hot dog bun grilling tray. You can wait, 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 let, 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 let's let's start this. And most people probably already know this that you're you're a vegan. Oh, that's and... the funny part. That's <laughs> the funny part is I don't even eat hot dogs. But I know people love hot dogs. So yeah. it's a grilling tray, two hot dogs, one bun. You by the time you finish two hot dogs, you can toast two buns. And what people don't realize is that a toasted hot dog bun is infinitely it's... better than it... a dry flaky bun. Man, and no, you know, I, I don't understand why no one knows that. It, it amazes me that, I mean, even if I make a hamburger on my grill, I'm grilling the bun. Yeah, you grill the bun, right? Of, of course. course. You grill the bun. Yeah, 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 you have to. Exactly. So I found a way to make that, you know, portable, affordable, portable and affordable. Yeah, yeah, we yeah, love that. <laughs> um, and yeah, How much great. does it so cost? How much does it cost? 19, it's nineteen ninety nine, and okay. it, And if it, I buy it within the next 48 hours? If you buy, should we do like a EuroLeague special? Oh my God. The, you know what? The, the EuroLeague 10 or EuroLeague 11, because I'm 11. Or no, what was your jersey number? Don't say anything like nine. I, I, no, I was number eight. I was always number eight. <laughs> number eight? Oh, I'll go with the highest number then. Um, yeah. Oh, we could figure it out. But yeah, so it's detachable handle, grill top stove, electric top stove. You can take it outside the grill. Um, and it is great. It's, it's something that, um, People don't know they need until they see it. And then they'll go, hey, I actually I actually would use this and want this. So it's uh, the hardest part about the whole entrepreneurial world is, as from the research I've done, is getting over that hump of why am I not a millionaire yet? Like, you know, it's like <laughs> you put in all your money and now you're in this phase of marketing, introducing it to people and telling people like, 
this is something you can use. This is something you can use. You'll love it. You'll love it. You'll love it. And that's the not, part. Not, not, you know why? Because every step you take to sell that product, someone's got their hand out getting their getting their 15% right. for this, getting their, right. you know, distribution 15%, right. put it on the shelves 15%, sell it here 15%. Everybody's not getting have the to, money, you know? You have to be, you have to be willing to lose money to make money and you have to be willing to, because I'm in the stage now of the, the losing money to try to make money and the stage of being told no. And you gotta, as an entrepreneur, you know, even I saw, I watched the, um, the JJ Reddick or it may have been Pat Beverly, but Mark Cuban was talking about him going through that phase of early on of being told no, right. no, no, and still sticking with something. And it's the people who can take 10 no's, 20 no's, a hundred no's. And then you get that one. Yes. Changes yeah. your life, you know? So hey man, that's no, the process. No, no, no's were the best thing that ever happened to me. People telling me that I couldn't do this. I couldn't do that. Whatever right. they tell me I can't do anything. I'm going, I'm going for it even that much harder, you know? Exactly. Nothing uh, like extra motivation from a no. Yeah, but so so now let me get back to Zweigels, okay? Because because as a matter of fact, the funniest thing is I'm doing some some Euro League research on you, not your you know your basketball stuff. You know, on the bottom of the on, on the bottom of all the stats and the games and everything else, the, you, it's the Oscar Meyer. Oscar Meyer is one of the sponsors, and you see the hot dog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you go into if you go into like last year's playoff, we'll get into that in a minute. If you go like you, you look at the five games on the bottom of that, it's an Oscar Mayer uh, sponsorship with a hot dog and the mustard on and everything else. But dude, Zweigels is a, a, the they come in red and white hots, and they're from Rochester, New York, where I was brought up, where I was born and raised. And it's the greatest hot dog you'll ever eat in your entire life. A Zweigel the, hot dog. Zweigels, yeah, exactly. Z W I E or E I G L E S from Rochester, New York. You look it up when we're done. And you get, you get in touch with them and see if they can sponsor up with your new product. So I, that's exactly what I'm talking with the lady about tomorrow. She did her research and she found New York and L.A. are the highest consumption of hot dogs. Zweigel's hot, Zweigel's hot dogs, man. Check them out tonight. They're, they're, they're fat. They're lo man, they're best hot dog ever. Best hot dog, hot dog ever. Dog. Okay. Thank you for that. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm, you're not going to thank me for it because I'm going to be getting some sort of percentage off of this. No. <laughs> it's coming. And, don't you and, and I like the way you said before, we'll go with the higher number. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with the higher <laughs> Hey. Hey, now. Hey, let's move on to something quick. I want to do something quick and easy before we head into Europe. NBA experience wasn't that great for no, you. No, it wasn't. It wasn't. That stemmed from just, like, learning how to play basketball. Like, Wisconsin, mm -hmm. like, was a system school and it's like right. it's a great system and it works it works fantastic we went to two final fours in a national championship yeah. but it's not you know nba professional basketball and the the beauty of that is you know i can technically say you know you know you achieve a dream playing in a game playing in some games and then you know coming to to europe and like really learning how to like learning more about just how to how to play basketball like it's two different worlds honestly you know um the the nba and euroleague are two completely different brands of yeah of, of basketball they're they're really not even um comparable but was it was it a dream to you to be drafted and be in the nba or, or was it just kind of like every kid's dream who plays basketball for sure right. but the uh the, the the dream the goal your journey doesn't you know in there there's many paths to the same destination there's you know, many, many ways you can you can take as many places you can go as many people you can meet to to all get to the same spot. You know, it's not where you start, it's where you finish and even more importantly, what you gather along the way from the start to the finish. So um, everything that happens is good, you know, mm -hmm. and I was supposed that, to come over I, here. I, I think that I think that's how we started the conversation seeing a little bit like there, there is no there is no bad experience. I, I the same thing. I, I went to Sacramento, made the team, which was, you know, I was a fourth round draft pick. That was back when there was 17 rounds still, you know. And, uh, and you know, I always talk about I always talk to players like, you know, that the dream you had of course, my dream was to be a professional baseball player. I had nothing to do with basketball, to be honest. But when I became an NBA player, it's like, man, this is, I'm living the dream. And all of a sudden I got cut like 17 games later. <laughs> I'm like, wait, hold on a second. That, that part of the dream never existed in my mind, you know? We can discuss that part of the yeah. dream. Wait a second. <laughs> it, but it's, no, it's, uh, it's, it's good. Like I said, it's all part of, 
it's all part of the journey of life. Like I said, uh, you know, like I like to say, who knows? What if I do get drafted and then have a career ending injury yeah. because I got drafted? You never know. You know, things happen how they happen, everything. Like we said, everything that happens is good. So came to Europe, met some people that become lifelong friends. Um, exactly. met, some, met some coaches, some 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 teammates, met some other, you know, just like one of my, because I'm in Turkey, I met a guy, Emery, at a uh, at a burrito shop in the middle of a street in Istanbul, you know, and just like now he's a lifelong friend. Gonna right. you know, the day I get married, he'll be he'll be at my wedding. So, like you know, stuff like that 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 happens. You know, you can't you know you can't predict anything like that. Um, and it's good, like I said, the experiences. Um, I've been able to travel and and be in all these places in Europe and. You know, looking back at obviously being in America and where I'm from, Americans look at, you know, traveling to Europe as like dream vacations and Whoa, retired. Exactly. retired. <laughs> um, I started two years ago in the summer and then even last year as I was traveling on my off days, like now I go to, you know, dream vacations and dream trips, you know, on off days just because I feel like going, you know. So. How, how many how many times you look back probably like me and I'm just like, man, that little kid from Rochester, that little kid from Toledo just is, is traveling yeah. the world and seeing so many things that you never thought was even open to you. Right. There's a whole lot. Like, for example, like I didn't know Lithuania was a country growing up. I'm telling you, before <laughs> I played for Jalgiris, did not know it was a country. Um Great experience though. Fans are great. I always say probably the best basketball fans in the world. Um, they're great. People are great. That whole experience was great. But, you know, just even being able to 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 do that and then the the most joy I get to from all the traveling experiences that like, when you watch movies and TV shows and then like I see something and I was like, wow. Talk to me about playing with Saras, man, because coming in from, like you said, a a, a system program, I mean, you kind of sound like an NFL quarterback when, when, when I say that, you know, but, uh, but you know, coming in from a system and you, you run into a guy like Saras who's inexperienced in coaching at that, at that point because he just started coaching, kind of like did a player to the coach thing. And, and, and I know he, you know, he used to play for Selko Brodovich, who I played for for three years. And those two can go at it, man. They, 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 they can get into you, man. <laughs> and and that, having that being your first European experience, tell me about it. It had to be a, a not only a culture shock, because you didn't even know Lithuania was a country. Right. But then so, you run into this superstar coach, ex-player, and he's all in your face about things. Yeah, so my, I guess for the people, so my, Technically, my first European experience was with Galatasaray with right. uh, Ertulu Erdogan, but my first Euro League was Jalgiris. Right. And um, no, it was it was good. Um, I appreciated him more the second year, even though in Barcelona, like obviously I didn't have a, a great year. But in the middle of that year, I would always tell my, my like my agent, my friends, like after I'm done with this year, like I'm gonna appreciate this year so much, even though it's like is being in the middle of a storm and right. you can see like when that sunlight comes, it's going to be great. But no, I love um, difficult to play for because mm -hmm. he expects perfection. And because of that is why my last season was so good. When everyone's like, oh, you had such a great year is because of like that, like constant, like be perfect, be perfect, do things the right way. And that's what I appreciate about him the most. I always tell anyone in Europe or America that he's probably the uh, smartest coach I've ever played for. And I don't want to say that. And then my current coach or other coaches go, oh, what do you think about me? But like, don't tell the pictures that. I, mean, I know. He knows he's my, he knows he's my guy. Right? <laughs> yeah, he too just knows. He knows. But, um, but no, just from like, uh, just the, 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 the X's knows that, Charles has and like just like just the basketball mind to 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 be around that I always tell people he's one of the uh the smartest minds I've been around and what I appreciate the most is that he and I told him to even though like he wasn't a great defender he helped me be a great one right um which is funny because my role in Barca was was like the the three and D guarding the other team's best uh player whether that was you know, the little point guard or I had to guard a four man or whatever, you know, and then like the ability to um, like read the game and like manipulate it 
Mm-hmm. So that way, like on offense, like I can be in spots where I want to be, you know, not where the defense wants me to be. And then like the the last and most important one is like his level of focus. Like he like just just be focused for those 40 minutes to do everything right. Like don't make a mistake. And obviously, you know, it's not possible. But like his expectation of that was that. And I told the guys like I remember games where like I'm guarding a guy in ACB and it's like his guy averages like 17. And like he has six, right? I'm doing my job. He has six. And then he scores, you know, it's like five minutes left in the game and he scores a layup. And now he has eight. And Charles is cussing me out. And you would think this guy and, has like and, and you're up 20. He has 30. <laughs> he has eight. You know? But like that's they want, like, hey man, they're, they demand perfection, man. That's, right. that's what you know. know, that's what I tell people. That's what I pre like his focus was just like just do it when you're on the court, just do the job do it the right way, no matter the score, no matter how you're playing, just like do your job, do it the right way. And when you're done, you're done. So like, like it was, it was, it was great. I, I appreciate a lot the experience because it helped me become a, uh, a, a better basketball player. And, um, you know, I think a lot of people who play for him can say the same thing. They can tell you, Hey, it was extremely difficult, but it's very, uh, it's very rewarding. And you like, it sounds weird, but you like you know you appreciate I guess like what you went through because of what it, what it makes you. But you you know, you, you know what I, I compared it to with Zelko when I played for Zelko for three years. It was it was like college. It was like man, you hated it when you were going through it because oh, yeah. it was so hard. But then you look back and like man, that was the best four years of my life. <laughs> that's what, that's what people say. Like I remember yeah. one point though, like in Zell Gears when I, when I played for Zell Gears, like. We were on a losing streak. It might have been seven Leora League losses in a row. And we weren't getting blown out. We were losing by like two and three. Like we were like our 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 loss point margin was like one point two, but we were in like right. eighth place. Yeah. And we're how is this possible? Welcome, like, welcome, welcome to the Euro League. Yeah, and we'd be uh <laughs> we'd be watching film and it'd be tip ball play, each play, you know, then you'd be like, wow. What do you what do you what did you do wrong? Why did you do it? What were you supposed to be doing? Where were you supposed to be? <laughs> cuss words, cuss words, cuss words. All right, next position, you know? And it's like, and you watch, like, after seven games of that, you know, you're like, you know? You, you feel like, I, I, I watch you play sometimes, and I watch you over the years between Zalgiris and the, the, the year in Barcelona, and now with Fenner. I feel like you need confidence from your teammates, from your coaches. I feel like you play better. You're more comfortable when you feel like everybody's on the same page around you. You know, like I say, you know, I heard you say something about Barcelona being a little bit different. You were given a different role. It, it, does that have something to do with maybe the up and down nature sometimes of your numbers or? No, I would say in, 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 in Barcelona, it was just like, I don't know. It was just, I, it's different because your role is different because like, the talent level on the team, you know, so like your role is whatever is expected of you right. is different. Um, but coming to Fenner last year was like the promise I made to myself that like I wouldn't let tough coaching or I wouldn't let like whatever affect my mood and uh, affect me trying to be uh, like me trying to be appeasing to like what's being asked of me. And that's like you look at players and there's like players who are like, all right, whatever the coach says I'm going to do. And then like when I mess up and he gets on me, it's like, it hurts and it's hard to right. recover from it. And you want to do wrong or you want to do right. And then there's the players that are like, I'm just going to play basketball. I don't care what you say to me. Like, I'm just going right. to go out there and I'm going to play. And last year, that's what I was like. I don't care what happens. I'm going to play. And as the season went on, I got even more into it. Like, I don't care about anything else. I'm just going to play basketball. I work harder than anyone. So I'm going to shoot the ball whenever I want to. I'm going to play hard and I'm going to do my best to help my team win. So that was a mindset that I had. And like, that was something that, again, my, my mom, all of my coaches, my friends were like, how do you worry too much? You think too much. You try to like do everything that's right. Like just go out there and, and just play. Like if you miss a shot, it's okay. You don't have to take the perfect shot every time you shoot the ball. And I was like, just shoot the ball. Or just shoot this shot. Just play. Like, don't think. So that was always my problem is, like, being too smart and intelligent in basketball and then, like, knowing when to, like, as my trainer Charlie says in the summer, he's like, you got to find out. You got to find out how to be dumb, Nigel. You know, you got to be dumb. When you're out that there. Not dumb. Let's just say, let's say naive. 
No, no, he said dumb. He meant dumb. He said, when you're out there, just be Come dumb. Come on, Charlie, like, that's harsh. Stop trying to worry about, like, doing the right thing and, like, doing this and doing that and making sure this is perfect. Like, just just, just play basketball, man. You know, like, don't, like, don't worry about it. Like, just, you got to have this amount, good amount of, like, I want to play basketball the smart way, the right way, and then just be, like, dumb or, as you say, naive. Just be dumb and naive and, like, yeah. like you're a kid out there and you're just playing a game. Because that's hey, what man, it is. My, my, my attitude is always, if you're going to sit me on that bench, it's because I've tried too hard. You know, I, I, I've done too much. Yeah. You, you need to sit me down and settle me down. You don't need to sit me down and tell me to get in the game or get my head in the game, you know? Right. That was, that was, that's a good way to put it. That's also something I say. I was like, all right, if, I, I'm, if I'm on the court, I'm going to do whatever I want to do until the dude takes me out and says, all right, now I stopped doing this. And he's never yeah. said that. So, you know, if anything, he's, 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 me, he's a great coach, man. I love him. Yeah. I love him. Anything, I love he's the always told me, shoot, shoot more, do more, be more. And, um, you know, this year, like the slow start, you know, everyone's like, like you said about knowing what to read and what to listen to and what right. not to is like, you know, you got the slow start. Everyone's telling me and the, the comments are crazy. You know, that's why you got to stay <laughs> off those. Everyone watching, don't read your, your comments and stuff, you know, just share your memes with your friends, which is really what I use Instagram for. Yeah. Share and memes and laugh. And if you're gonna and if you're gonna write stuff to people, at least do it with your own face and your own, exactly. and your own thing, you know what I mean? But the slow, the slow start, like slow start, you know, is like, like, honestly, I'm just two made threes per game away from averaging like 14 or 15 points. Yeah. And it'd be a completely different conversation. So like, yeah. you just keep putting in the work, you know, like the shots are going to fall. The the form technique is there, the confidence there, because the confidence comes from your work. And, you know, it's an old Kobe adage. Everyone loves to say Kobe, your confidence comes from the work you put in. Exactly. You no, know, like I said, not many working harder. So it's going to be good. And then when they start falling, then, you know, then everyone's going to be a friend again. So let, let me finish out the basketball part with the, with the, that five game playoff last year in the, in the Euro league playoffs, you know, like what anybody says to be a championship team and as great as they were, they earned the level of luck they got on that game when he shot from Slukas, because right. honestly, we, we outplayed them that game. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, I mean, dominated them know, that, game. that would have been, three wins in a row. We lost the first one and we outplayed them for three games in a row and we should have won, should have won the series three, one, but, uh, man, no, I can't, they, I can't, they, I can't remember who was supposed to switch out on Slukas, man, but they just gave it was, him that. I, they just I gave him that if half I was any closer, foot. If I was any closer, I would have fouled him. <laughs> and then oh, it, it was you who, who stepped out on him. What, what's worse, fouling a guy and then him making the free throws or him shooting over you, you know? Because if you foul him, everyone's like, why are you fouling, blah, 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 blah. It went off the backboard too, didn't it? I have no, I have, I tried to cancel that game out. But like, <laughs> now it's a great, it's a great series. And I'm scarred too, because I would never bump a roller. Tark Black probably had eight straight points on switches. And they run, they ran the same play the last like five minutes. Right. Targ rolls wide open. I not even half a second bump him. Sasha pops to the top of the three. You know how fast he shoots the ball. He yeah, gets it yeah, off yeah. and they tie the game. If I don't give up that three, who knows what happens? But that's that that bump scarred me for life. Um, <laughs> but no, they're a great team. Like I said, we we honestly outplayed them for three straight games. They got they hit the shot. They deserved it. They were the best team know all year and when you're playing great like that you deserve some luck and they earned it for sure um and then they finished the job at home game five and then they went on to the final four but it was a it was a great series especially the way we we made it tough because everyone was saying three zero or three one exactly because you know they handed our butts to us the first two games in the regular season i think they won by a average margin of like 25 points so they they the, the way we were able to, like, you know, compete in that series with them um, really was good for us to show, like, hey, guys, you know, we're a good group. We're a good core and bringing most of them back this year. And uh, like I said, they were a great team. They, they, they deserved it. They took care of business on their home court and, uh, and, and won. But it was a crazy atmosphere, crazy atmosphere at the Peace and Friendship Stadium, isn't it? It's so much fun, so much fun to play in, though. Sure it is. It's, it's insane. It's insane. You know, they have really very, like all Europe, very passionate fans. Yeah. Tough place to play. But you, you you need to focus right now. You got the languages down. You got the foundation thing. You got you got trademarking, inventions, everything. Right now, 
you got the EuroLeague trivia game, man. You know how it goes? Five questions. Each one is worth 10 more points. So number one is worth 10, two is 20, three is 30, four is 50. And I know my guy should be sending me, I always forget who's got the record. I think 100 points is the record, if I'm not mistaken. And I can't remember exactly who did it. We've done so many of these, but we start from easy, we go to hard. Are you ready? Okay, I'm not, I'll just say this right now. My no, right no, now no, 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 no. It's not no, great. No excuses. It's not great. Oh, gosh. Come on, it's all, pretty, it's all pretty recent, so I, th I think, oh, okay, you, can, okay. I think okay. you can do good. All right, question number one with 10 points. Who scored the last two points of last year's Final Four? Oh, uh, you right? There you go, Sergio. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. See, you got ten. Shots. See, you got ten points. Yeah, that's old school. That's old school yeah, basketball. Man. They don't have that much anymore. Question number two: Which coach has recently moved from one Euroleague team to another? What coach has recently moved from one Euroleague team to another? I mean, okay, the, the term recent could be, well, Lasso just went from Madrid to Bayern. Does no, that this, count? Se this season. This season. Oh. I'll give, you, I'll give you that hand. Okay, this season. What coach went from one team to another? I, I can't believe I, I, I lost that already. Did, did Ducho get another job already? <laughs> did he? Is that the is that the answer? Like, oh my gosh! You I got it. He went oh, from no. Red, he, he went from Red Star back to Basconia. All right, I'm gonna give you the 20 points because you got it. Number three, which is the team that you have faced the most times in the Euroleague? Team that I have faced the most times in the Euroleague. The team that you've played the most games against. It would probably have to be. Uh, Either Bayern or Olympiacos. I want to say Bayern. Damn, you should have went with Olympiacos. Is it Olympiacos? Yeah, you played them 14 times. But you're out on the 30 point question. Here comes the 40 point question. Which former player has played in the same teams that you have played for in the EuroLeague? Meaning this player has played for Zalgiris? This player has played for FC Barcelona, and he's also played for Fenerbahce. What player? Okay, let me eliminate this right now. It's not Jan. Jan never played at Joe Gears. It's not, uh... It's not Roland Smith. He never played for Fenerbahce. Uh, 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 Sharunas. There you go. All right, so that's 10, 20, that's 30, make it 70 points. Yeah, I think you have a, I think you have a chance right here to become the all-time leader, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, let's go. I'm locked in. Who has been the fastest coach to reach 200 wins in the EuroLeague? Fastest coach mm -hmm. to reach 200 wins in the EuroLeague. Well, someone just won that, didn't they? I feel like someone just got that. I, if I had to pick a name, I would say Lasso. No, Edri Messina made it in two, 263 games. Your head coach, Tudis, made it in 265 games. And Xavi, oh. pa and Xavi Pasquale's in third place with 280. Oh, man. I feel like because Lasso was at Barcelona, I mean, at Madrid, I thought they just won yeah. all the time. So I, yeah, like, no. I racked him up really quickly. Yeah, that's not. It's, I don't think that's a bad. I don't think that's a bad answer. I just don't think he's reached 200 yet. He hasn't reached 200 yet. He, I mean, yeah, he must have. I mean, he was he has over to have, 10, right? 11 years, right? He for sure has to have reached 200, right? I don't know. That's a good question because in the first couple of years they weren't that they weren't that dominant. So. Oh, they weren't. Yeah, I, don't know. I mean, they they were there all the time, but they were, you know. That's a good question. I, I, I want to I, I wanna recount. I want to recount for Lasso. Our Pablo's gonna have to look up Pablo Lasso, but I think he's gonna take him more games though. Hey, my man, look at this is uh, took a little longer than than you probably wanted, than I probably expected, but um, it's, it's been amazing talking to you. I've heard from so many people about the type of person you are. All my research that I've done and, and everything that you you've proved to me has, has shown me that you're just more than just just the basketball player, man. And that's like that's cool. You got everything going on. 
you know, the whole story about your stepdad, your mom, your family is, is an amazing story because so many of that, so many of those things can go the other way in our life. You know what I mean? And you're luck, you're a lucky man, and you and you take advantage of every moment of it, man. I just appreciate your time, and I appreciate you being here. And, and when you come to Madrid, I want I want a hot dog cooker. You are got you, got you. <laughs> I will do. Thanks so much for uh, for having me. Hope it was great.